Hi everyone, so this is uh, Matt Ingram with uh, the first part of the first replication for the class in Spatial Analysis. Um, in this uh, segment of the replication exercises, I'll be using uh, Geoda and Geoda Space uh, to generate the results in the Baller et al. piece uh, that we read. Uh, Geoda and Geoda Space have the advantage of being a very easy entry point into uh, exploratory and explanatory spatial analysis, so that's one reason uh, we start with them. So at this stage I, I assume that you have downloaded and installed the necessary software, so in this case Geoda and Geoda Space. Um, please see the other video uh, and the earlier instructions about where to locate the software if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. I also assume that you've downloaded all of the data, um, as instructed earlier, into a single folder on the machine on which you're working. Um, so that basically once you open the software you'll be able to uh, set a working directory um, or access all of the data files from within a single folder on your computer. In this replication these are the main steps that we're going to hit. Uh, these are the main empirical findings reported by Baller et al. So we have four LISA cluster maps that we would like to replicate, an OLS regression f with four different models, uh, and then diagnostics for the stability of coefficients across uh, regions in the United States, specifically two regions, the South and the Non-South. And then Table 3 reports the spatial lag regressions for the Southern counties, um, a little more than 1,400 counties in the southern part of the United States. Then Table 4 reports uh, mainly spatial error regressions in the uh, 16 or 1,700 counties in uh, the non-south of the United States. So let's start here uh, with these ELISA cluster maps and uh, see if we can generate the findings from Baller et al. So let's remind ourselves what Baller and all we're looking at. Um, I've got the, the piece here on the right. And uh, this is the first Moran scatter plot, also known as a ELISA map or ELISA cluster map. And we want to be able to generate or replicate this image right, along with um, uh, map 2, 3, and 4. Map 1 is for 1960, uh, 2 for 1970, and so on. So let's first uh, open up uh, Geoda. I've got it open here. When you open Geoda, it's basically just this simple toolbar. And we're going to move quickly here. We can we can look uh, at other utilities and other functionalities that uh, existed in Geoda, but we're going to move quickly in this replication just to work through the mechanics of generating the results in the paper. So you can open a uh, a project file using either the folder icon here or drop down from file to new project. I'm just going to click on new project here on the left. And uh, Geoda allows you to work with several different data types. So again, if we click on the open folder icon on the right, you can see the different data types that you can work with in Geoda. We're going to start with this Esri shapefile. So just click on that. And I've got my folder set up for the replication of Baller et al. So here are my data files. These are the same files you should have been able to download from Blackboard. Uh, the first file is the complete set of more than 3,000 counties in the United States, all four decennial years. Uh, the second file is only for the non-South, and the third file is for the South only. So let's open the, the global, the full data set. Uh, now every time that you open a shapefile in Geoda, it generates a themeless uh, map basically a blank map. This is one nice way of confirming that the geography that you want to be working with is indeed the geography that was loaded into memory. So uh, you can keep this here if you want or you can close it. I'm just going to close it out. Now in order to generate this Moran scatterplot map 
and we go to space along the top menu options and on space click and go down to the fourth option univariate local Moran's eye click on that and we want to generate the map for 1960 homicide rate so uh, having clicked on univariate local Moran's eye we see a list of all of the variables that are in memory and we see homicide rate is the fourth one down for 1960 so let's uh, click on that and bring it up now next uh, Geoda is going to ask us for our spatial weights. We already have those generated. Uh, I also provided those on Blackboard, so let's just open that up here. And it's this NAT 10 nearest. Sorry, it's a little bit crowded in my folder here, but NAT 10 nearest is the 10 nearest neighbors. Uh, if you recall from, from the article, that's the specification that they use for uh, neighbors or neighborhoods. So let's double click that and set it as the default. Now basically what this has done then is we have told Geoda that for an, any one county, say County A, when we are considering issues of spatial dependence we want it to consider uh, not just the nearest county, but the ten nearest counties to kind of get a sense of a neighborhood. So as once we've identified the spatial weights matrix, this uh, box comes up. And let's just click on the Moran scatter plot and the cluster map. We can look at the significance map later, but click on the on the bottom two options. Uh, also feel free to, to play with 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 the significance map on your own if you like but for now let's just focus on the cluster map and the Moran scatter plot click OK and uh, Geoda generates two new windows the first is the traditional Moran scatter plot we'll see a lot of these over the course of the semester and these offer a nice intuitive way for understanding what's going on in the map so let's let's bring them both up here Looking first at the Moran scatter plot on the left, basically what's what's happening on the x-axis is that we're plotting the homicide rate homicide rate internal to any one unit. Oh, so let's take the hypothetical county A, unit A. Um, its homicide rate is plotted on the x-axis here alongside all other 3,000 plus counties. Right? The homicide rates, the raw homicide rate is is plotted along the x-axis. Along the y-axis now is the mean or the average homicide rate for unit A's 10 nearest neighbors. Another way to think about the y-axis is the neighborhood mean or the neighborhood average of homicide. So again, the, the, the homicide rate for any one unit is plotted along uh, the x-axis, and then the neighborhood average homicide rate for any one unit for that unit is plotted along the y-axis. If we see this kind of s a positive relationship then between the x-values and the y-values, then we can begin to infer that there's some spatial dependence, right? That that homicide rate is not randomly distributed across the 3,000 plus U.S. counties, which is what we're seeing here. And we see the slope of this line essentially reported as the Moran's eye. And this is a global or overall aggregate uh, measure of spatial dependence. Now the, the global uh, measure of spatial dependence can also be broken down into local measures of spatial dependence. So any one of these units, let's just take this one here, let's click on this one here. The nice thing in Geoda is that the, the, the graphs are related to each other so you see that having clicked on this dot here highlighted the county over on this map. You can click on this one here, you can see now that it's this one over here. You know, we, we click on a bunch of them, and you can see 
now it's highlighted these right where if we click on all of these here you can see that they're it's picking them up here but the for any one of these units we can generate a statistic that measures the association between the homicide rate internal to that unit and the average homicide rate uh, in its surrounding units. So if the we can discern or distinguish between units in which that have a high homicide rate and are surrounded by other units with high homicide rates and units that have a low homicide rate and are surrounded by other units with a low homicide rate. And in many ways the Moran's scatter plot allows us to do this by breaking up the plot into these four quadrants. Let's call this quadrant one up on the upper left, quadrant two on the upper right, quadrant three on the bottom left, and quadrant four on the bottom right. And we're primarily interested in quadrants two and three. And that's because quadrant two reports those units or contains all of those units that have a high value on the x-axis and a high value on the y-axis. They're above the average value on the x-axis and above the average value on the y-axis. So here we have, uh, I'm just restating something that I said earlier, but in inside this quadrant 2 then, we have all of those units that have an above average homicide rate internally, right, internal to their geographic boundaries. But they are also, looking at the y-axis, in a neighborhood that has an above average level of violence. So you can see essentially that we've captured almost all of the red units here uh, in, in, in identifying all of those that are in, in quadrant one. And conversely, in quadrant three, uh, we capture all of those units that have a below average homicide rate internally and are situated or embedded within a neighborhood that also has below average homicide. So again, we probably got to capture most of the blue units if we highlight all of these units here. And indeed, that's the case. Right? So that's the relationship between the Moran scatter plot and the the Moran scatter plot map or the LISA cluster map. Again, it's called a LISA cluster map because LISA stands for Local Indicator of Spatial Autocorrelation, which is just the individual value of or the individual association for any one of these units. And if it has an above average homicide rate internally and it's in a neighborhood that has above average homicide rate and the lies of value is positive. Um, and also, it, 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 it would be positive as well if it's below average. Um, <coughs> excuse me, if it's in quadrant three below average and um, internally and has a below average neighborhood homicide rate. But these, the colors are simply identifying uh, the quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, and four are high, high, low, low, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, high, high is quadrant two, low, low is quadrant three, low, high uh, is quadrant one, and high, low is quadrant four. Not significant identifies all of those units where the LISA value may be positive, may be negative, um, but it's not statistically significant. And statistical significance here is determined by a, a perm permutation analysis, a kind of random shuffling. Uh, we'll talk about that more next week, um, but uh, we won't get into that right now in this replication. So one way, let's close the Moran scatter plot now and just compare the map that we've generated uh, to the map reported by Baller et al. Um, if you recall the discussion in Baller, they, they weren't quite concerned with the high-low and low-highs, those observations in, in the quadrant one and four in the Moran scatter plot. 
so they left these blank. Uh, it'll be easier to compare if we match up the colors more or less, so we can do that by right-clicking on each of these boxes. If we right-click on the Not Significant box, we can make that white and do the same for low, high, and high, low. Then let's make high, high, black, and low, low, gray. And this then now is a nice replication of map one in Baller et al. Again, there's going to be some small differences because the statistical significance in any one of these maps uh, changes each time you do it because it's based on this random shuffling, this permutation. Um, so you'll never get exactly the same time, exactly the same results every time. We could rerun this replication on the left, and we will we might get slightly different um, uh, findings in this map or a slightly different map but the broad pattern should remain the same. So we want to compare those broad patterns. And the the biggest, or the two main patterns that Baller et al. Um, highlight is a kind of band of high, high uh, counties across the south in the U.S. and we see that in our map. And then also a band of low, low counties across the northeast and upper midwest into the midwest and we see that in our map as well so again this is a this is a nice replication of map one let's just uh, maximize this now you can you can save this map if you don't want to just close it out and get rid of it if you right click on the on the image of the map you can click save here and uh, if you do decide to save your map, I recommend s saving it as a portable network, portable networks graphic file. Um, that'll be easier to open on your computer, even if you don't have internet access. I'm not going to do that right now, but I am. Also, I am. You can also copy the 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 image to your clipboard. I am going to do that, just so you can see that you could. Uh, drop that into a PowerPoint presentation or a uh, um, a Word document if you wanted to and and relatively quickly have a nice a nice image in your in a draft of a paper that you're working on or a draft of a presentation that you're preparing. So again this is I've just copied and pasted that into this PowerPoint and this is what it would look like if it were projected in as part of my presentation. So that's a very quick replication of this map one in Geoda. Um, I'm not going to do maps two, three, and four, uh, but you could you could do so and uh, and quickly. Again, I'll just go through the steps. Uh, I'm going to close this map out here, but if you go to space. We go to the fourth option down, univariate local Moran's I, uh, and click on the variable of interest. Here I'll do human um, homicide rate 1970, the next one, and I'll just generate the cluster map this time. And there's a cluster map, right? So for 1970. Um, so we go ahead and, and play with this play with this option and these replications and see if you can generate all four of the maps uh, in Baller at all.